Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the RMIT Early Offer Program webinar. I hope you guys have been enjoying your Sunday and, and have been enjoying our next best digital open day. Um, don't worry if you miss out on any of the information or if you have to leave early or you missed any of the sessions today because all of the programs and all the recordings will be available for the whole month of September on demand on our open day platform. Uh, my name is Tarika and I work in the student recruitment team, so I'll be covering everything you need to know about what our early offer program is today, how you can be eligible, the different categories, how to apply, all the evidence that you need to submit. And we'll also have Sam and Ella who are current RMIT students um, who'll be able to talk to you about how you can link some of the experiences you have in your higher studies of high school with your early offer application. So hopefully you find this information session really useful. It's probably most useful for those currently in year 12 and I'll talk to the dates in accordance to that. If you are in year 10 or year 11 or younger year levels, it's completely fine to join in. We are likely to continue this program in the years um, and it does give you a bit of an idea of things that you can incorporate into your lifestyle and into your you know, after school activities that can help you with this application in the future. So if you do have any questions throughout this session, feel free to pop them in the chat and the whole team will be able to answer them for you or we'll save it for question time and I'll answer them at the end live. But yeah, hope you enjoy the session. Before I begin, I would like to take a moment to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land we are on and pay my respect to any elders past, present and emerging and any Indigenous people joining us today. So I guess the early offer program is an opportunity for students and yourselves to be, um, to gain entry into university courses based off more than just your ATAR. So in the past, it's really just your ATAR score and your academic scores that kind of allow you to gain entry into your program or your selection task if you're applying for you know, a design program. But in this case, this early offer program looks at you as a whole person. So it takes into, into account the extracurricular activities and other skills that you have besides just studying um, and it helps you pretty much gain an early offer. So basically how that works is Generally, year 12 students, you complete your exams, you go on schoolies, you have Christmas, all that kind of stuff. And then in January, you get your offer and you find out, you know, where you get your place for tertiary studies. With the early offer program, if you meet the requirements and you submit a successful application, you actually get an offer in September. So that's actually before your exams, you'll get a conditional offer, which pretty much means as long as you meet the agreed ATAR score and the prerequisite subjects for the program, you're pretty much guaranteed a place. And that's really good to know going into exams that you already have an offer. So as long as you know, put all that hard work to good use during exam time, you're pretty much set. And it's a really nice kind of way of knowing you're on the right track of getting into the program that you're wanting to get into. So it really takes into account, you know, not just your studies, um, but also your extracurricular activities. And we'll touch on how you can incorporate everything that you've done in your application throughout this presentation. So to find out who's eligible, it is currently for Year 12 students if you're studying VCE or IB as well. Um, you have to submit an application through VTAC for these programs and it is currently only available for Australian and New Zealand citizens and Australian permanent residents. So unfortunately, if you are an international student, it currently this year isn't available to you. This might change in the future, but at the moment it is only for Australian citizens who are studying Year 12 or IB, so doing VCE subjects and they're planning on applying through VTAC. So the five different categories that you can apply for, are, I'll go through them now, but pretty much they're five categories that um, your skills and your activities will fall under. You only need to apply and meet two of these categories out of the five. So don't get overwhelmed looking at all the different things that I'm going to talk about and, you know, be like, I don't fit under every single one. That's completely fine. Just think, just pick the two that your experiences fit the best under um, and you're pretty much good to go from there. So the categories that we have, we have leadership. So it's pretty much like, are you a born leader? Have you managed groups? Have you coached a team or coordinated events um, and done any, anything of that sort. We then have creative thinking. So have you thought outside of the box for something? So maybe an assignment. It really looks at how um, imaginative you can be, how creative you can be, um, and also how entrepreneurial you can be as well. So really about being innovative and thinking of new ideas, um, incorporating that into your lifestyle or at school or outside of school. 
There's then interpersonal skills and teamwork. So I think this one's a common one, an easy, easy one to think about. Say if you play team sport or work a part-time job, it's really about your relationships with others, how you can respectfully communicate and listen to members of your team and be a really great team player. Then there's communication. So it's really how you can speak to different types of people, different levels, different cultural backgrounds, different ages, um, and any examples around that. And then finally, there's analytical and critical thinking. So this is for those of you who would love to solve problems, um, who really can be process driven, um, analyzing and reasoning, all those different kind of things. So these are the five categories and we'll go into more detail into each category later on in this session as well. So to put together this early offer program, our selection team um, and our academics and everyone really came together to try and think of five categories that, you know, skills that you would have picked up at your age um, can be utilised in your studies and useful for your studies. And then also once you go on to find work as well. So we'll break down the matrix after this slide, but basically in your application, you need to submit a 200 word written piece for each category that you're wanting to apply for. So say if you want to apply for leadership and communication, you write 200 words for leadership and then 200 words for communication, and then you need to supply evidence, which I'll touch on later on in the session. So it really depends on um, what kind of activity you're trying to use and talk about, um, how long you've been doing the activity for, so that also takes um, gets taken into account and it is um, a competitive application so you'll be assessed and ranked against everyone else who's applied and you'd be offered a place in terms of merit and things like that but if you have any questions around that again feel free to pop it in the chat so we'll go through each of the categories in the skills matrix now and I'll touch on different examples that you might be able to use um, and then we'll also hear from our students later on in the session so you can hear from them um, so that might give you a really good understanding of what you can apply for. So with analytical and critical thinking, that's really about how you can problem solve, how you can have analytical reasoning, critical thinking, and how well you can analyze information. So I guess it might be someone who is wanting to study engineering um, and you wanna showcase, you know, different things like things that you might've worked on. So if you're someone who's really great at maths or you've run a maths competition or you've done any kind of extracurricular activity around that, you might have led a, oops, sorry, I've just gone. There you go. Um, you might have had to do some critical thinking and problem solving for something that you've worked on at school. So for example, if you're in the school committee and you're trying to plan year 12 formal, obviously with COVID, it's a bit difficult. COVID's the problem, you're someone who's gonna solve that problem. It takes analytical and critical thinking to kind of come up with a solution. So that's a good example there. Um, for analyzing information, you might be a translator. So maybe for mum and dad at home, um, if English isn't their first language, or maybe, you know, you do something and help out someone in the community with that. So these are the kind of things you can talk about for this category. We then, we then have interpersonal skills and teamwork. So this is about how you provide support to others, how you delegate you know, tasks and responsibilities with respect, how you perceive different people's feelings and situations and you know your emotional intelligence with those kind of things, how you listen, adapt, build relationships, be pragmatic and be procedural. So I guess the really common ones for this one, as I mentioned earlier, if you have a part-time job, you're likely to work in some sort of a team, even if it's a two, three people team, that still shows teamwork if you play a team sport um, or you help out with the family business or you've done some group kind of activity in school um, or into you know um, in the school play or anything like that they're all different ways you can showcase that you've been a part of a team we then have leadership. So this one's probably stands out to those of you who are school captains and SRC and all that already, because you probably had to write a piece um, in order to be selected. Um, but it doesn't always have to be um, an official leadership title. You might have a leadership role at home. You might be someone who helps out with um, a family member who might be unwell and you might have you know, stepped up to be a leader in that sense, or you might be a leader for some younger siblings and things like that. So these are different ways that you can um, 
showcase how well you can, you know, have um, how well of a leader you can be. So some of the kind of skills in this category would be providing support to others, again, delegating with respect. So you'll notice some of these um, kind of subcategories fit under multiple skills matrix categories, and that's completely fine to, um, you know, talk about the same example. So if you're talking about, you know, a team sport for both communication and leadership, you're definitely able to do that. You just need to make sure you do choose different examples for each 200 word piece. Um, then we have accurately perceiving feelings or situations, listening, adaptability, relationship building, pragmatic and procedural. So that was leadership. And then we have communication. So this one's a really important one. Um, for those of you who work part-time jobs, you probably hear the question, you know, what, what are your skills? How well do you communicate? And I'll tell you now, once you finish university and go out and find a job, it is still one of the common questions. So definitely a really important one to kind of practice as well. So this is about how you express your ideas, how well you can negotiate, um, how well you can demonstrate appropriate technical and operational skills, your attention to detail in your work, Work as well. So it's not always about how you can speak to someone. It's also say if you're writing an email or um, just showcasing your idea and putting it forward, how well do you communicate that? And also diversity. So communicating to people with different backgrounds um, and different, you know, um, cultures and things like that. So a few examples that would fit under communication, you might be in the debate team. So you might have, um, you know, taken part in a school competition versus other schools or other students. In that case, you obviously, you know, you have to negotiate, you have your rebuttals, you have to talk about your ideas and communicate in that in a way that, you know, people can understand your point of view. Um, another example is you might be a youth leader. So you might be the leader of lead, um, leading activities in the community or for your school um, or anything like that and then also coaching so even if you play a sport you can use that example for communication as well so you might coach your little sister's soccer team and you obviously have to communicate to younger kids and explain you know how to kick a ball why we kick a ball a certain way all those kind of things so there's some examples for communication for you and then finally, we have creative thinking and innovation. So when you think creative, you're probably thinking about like painting a picture and all that kind of stuff. But this one's really about thinking outside the box. So how well you can express your ideas, how well you can negotiate, again, demonstration, your attention to detail and diversity. So an example for this would be you might have had to write a short story um, for um, an assignment or you might have, you know, entered a competition external to school um, or you might have had to design a poster or a logo or something creative in that sense again for um, school or for your part-time job or for dad's company or something like that so these are the kind of things that you would talk about um, under this category. So what I have now for you is a couple student examples. Now these are fake examples because it is the first year we have had early offer at RMIT. Um, so these are some kind of fake examples that you have and obviously you can't copy them because our selection team already have it and it will be based on your own situation. But hopefully this gives you an understanding of how you can write your statement. And also it's important to keep it to 200 words. I know sometimes it's really easy to blabber on and elaborate and you want to add all the adjectives and synonyms but sometimes short is sweet um, and that's really what our um, selection team sorry is looking for so we'll start off with the example of Samantha Jones so she has a school leadership position and the category that she's going to be applying for in this piece is leadership. So what she's written is, throughout my high school experience, I have had several leadership positions. My role as a middle, middle school SRC year 11 school prefect and senior school captain has provided me with the opportunity to assist, support and lead major school events. Utilising my presentation and communication skills, I have acted as a role model to my fellow peers while being a positive representation of the school. As my school prefect, part of my responsibility was to act as a mentor to a group of year seven students that required support transitioning into secondary school. I continued to make a conscious effort to be a strong role model to the group, demonstrating positive behavior and an assertive attitude when coaching them through their transition period. So I'll just pause for a second and say, 
when you are writing your piece, a bit of a tip is to use the STAR method. So any of those who've gone for part-time jobs or know anyone in HR, they always talk about this STAR method, which is um, situation, task, action, and then result. So talk about, you know, all those different points and that way you have kind of covered everything and given examples to how you've demonstrated the leadership skill. But I'll continue. So I have assisted in developing the group of year sevens communication and participation participation skills addressed and solve conflicts between group members while demonstrating effective skills and processes that will help them act as a more responsible student. Further, throughout my role as a senior school captain, I have had the opportunity to work alongside the school leadership team, teachers and my fellow school leaders to plan and coordinate events that deliver significant impact, leading multiple fundraising events, including a campaign for Red Cross and local community initiatives. So they're the examples that you talk about. Um, I received a school, I received a school leadership award earlier this year for my efforts within the school and broader community, which further highlights my leadership experience. So it doesn't have to be too much, 200 words, just keep it short um, and make sure you cover the points and you should be um, pretty good to go from there. But I have another example. So we have James Smith. So his experience is that he volunteers at the local CFA. And the category he's applying for is teamwork. So he wrote, during my experience volunteering with the CFA, I have been able to work with a great team of volunteers and peers. Over the last two years of my experience, I have had the, um, I have been able to effectively work with the team, speak openly and honestly, and listen carefully to all members in my team. So that's the listen category that we're talking about in the, in the um, teamwork um, kind of table that we showed you. So make sure you clearly outline which kind of area you're trying to talk about and that really helps you when you're submitting your application. Um, so I'll continue. I have been able to solve problems within a group setting and be able to safely handle situations. During one experience, I was able to communicate with my teammates about how the location of a search and rescue civilian who had escaped a fire on a property. Through constant communication, collaboration and actively listening, we were able to quickly search for the area and locate the civilian safely. We also managed to save the dog as well, which is always great news. Uh, in my experience in volunteering with the CFA demonstrates my ability to work effectively within a team, utilising positive working relationships, communication and teamwork skills. So hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea of how you can write your statement and keeping it short to the 200 word limit. Um, but there are lots of different kind of experiences that you can draw on that you would have done in your high schools from 10, year 11, year 12, that you can really um, make use of in your application. So some of the things you can talk about, any volunteer work that you do, um, if you participate in any communi um, community events, run stalls, fundraising activities, um, if you're a member of a youth committee, if you're a leader of a school club, a society, if you coach, um, if you have diverse life circumstances as well. So as I mentioned, if you're helping out, say, for a sick family member or, you know, something in your personal life where you can use some of those skills in your application, you're definitely able to do so. Work experience, school captain, team captain, I guess any type of captain, um, being in a leadership position, so you might be a manager at Macca's or something like that. Um, or you might be someone who's really creative. You might have created your own game or your own app or website. You might have a really cool Instagram page with the whole theme and whatnot or a side hustle business, anything like that really, really, um, they're the kind of things that you can really make use of. And that's the kind of applicants we're looking for for this program. And finally, if you made a short film, so a short film or a music production, anything like that, it doesn't have to be too big, um, just shows that you've been putting effort into something outside of your studies. And that's pretty much the kind of thing things that we're looking for. So beside your two, besides your 200 word um, statement for each category that you apply for, you also need to submit some evidence. So obviously we believe you, but it's always good to have a bit of backing. So some ways you can do that are by providing a reference letter. So that can be from either your employer, it can be your teacher, if they were a part of an assignment, it could be your career advisor, it could be your supervisor at your job, your manager or your coach. Um, or it can be something like a certificate. So uh, it might be a completion certificate, just a certificate 
for participating, your badges, photos of that, hyperlinks to websites, um, apps, or anything that you've written as well. So you are able to provide the one piece of evidence for both categories. So if you only have one piece of evidence, only one letter for both, that's completely fine. You just need to make sure you have at least one. But if you'd like to um, upload multiple, again, more than welcome to do so. So definitely tell, ask mum and dad to help you dig up those certificates that you would have put away nice and, you know, in a safe spot, because this is when it's going to come in handy. You can scan um, and upload the PDFs as a part of your application. So in terms of early offers for this year, unfortunately, as much as we'd want to, we can't have all of our programs available for the early offer scheme this year. It is a pilot, so it is a limited amount of courses offered at the moment. If you are in year 10 or 11 or younger, um, you might this list might grow in the future. So that's something to think about for those. But for those of you in year 12, it is only the, the courses listed on the screen. So it's the Bachelor of Business. There's the Bachelor of Business Professional Practice, Engineering Honours, data science, space science, applied maths and statistics, Chinese medicine, pharmaceutical sciences, legal and dispute studies, environment and society, and arts and music industry. Now, another thing that I don't think I mentioned earlier, with your conditional offer, you actually get a bit of an agreed ATAR that's slightly lower than the normal ATAR that students use to get in. So, for example, a standard um, business professional practice degree is roughly around an 80. If you get 75 um, up in your exams and with your score, then you get in that way as well. So another benefit of the early offer program, besides just getting that early offer, is you actually get a lower ATAR that you can get into the program with, which is really nice um, and it gives you that peace of mind. Obviously, it doesn't mean don't study, don't study hard. It just means that you have a bit of the safety blanket to fall on. Um, if you're someone who's looking at this list um, and getting disheartened because you can't see the name of the program, program that you're wanting to apply for, don't stress at all. Um, you won't be disadvantaged in any way at all if your course isn't on here. It just means you'll submit your application just like how everyone else would have done so in the past years and this time as well. Um, if you, no one has the opportunity to apply for an early offer for any other program, so you'll just be in the same boat as everyone else and selected in just like how we do any other year. So yeah, don't stress too much. And if things don't go to plan, there'll always be pathways and other options you can use to get into the course if you don't. So just something to keep in mind. So now what I'll do is I'll talk about the application process. There are a few different steps, so we'll kind of outline them for you. So obviously the first thing will be um, to apply through the RMIT website. So the first thing you do is apply through the RMIT website for the early offer program, and you still need to apply for the course itself through VTAC. Um, the second thing after you start your application, it will ask you to submit your 200 word statement, um, and that is talking about your experiences, and then you also upload your supporting documents documentation. So it might be a reference letter or a scanned certificate. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, you can use the one piece of evidence for both categories or two separate. It's completely up to you. Um, when you are uploading your um, reference letter, again, you can include hyperlinks, website apps, videos and blogs. So just make sure you have the link ready um, and good to go so that and you've shared it so that they can access it uh, and they can have a look at it from there. From then, what happens is our selection team will be able to assess your um, application and mark it against the skills categories, I'm sorry, the skills matrix category. So the tables that we we're looking at before, they'll pretty much read your application and see if it matches the one you're trying to talk about. And you only need, as I said, two categories to be met in order to be made an offer for the early offer program. Then if you're successful in gaining um, an early offer place, you'll be given an conditional offer, sorry, a conditional offer in September. So that's when you'll be able to celebrate that you're halfway there, you just need to do exams, make sure you get the marks and you're good to go. And then um, afterwards, you can always adjust your VTAC preferences. So if you are wanting to apply for the RMIT program, obviously you put it in the highest possible place. So that way it correlates with the early offer program and then you'll be guaranteed the place and you end up with the final offer um, with everyone else as well. So hopefully that made sense, but if you have any questions, again, more than happy to cover that in question time as well. So we have a bit of a step-by-step -step guide here of what the application process and portal looks like. So we'll pop a link in the chat for you now as well, so you can go and have a look for yourself. Be you pretty much just Google RMIT early offer or click the link in the chat and then hit the apply button. So it's at the top, big red button, click apply, 
And then all you need to do is start entering your details. So pretty straightforward. It'll be name, email. It'll also ask you for your VTAC ID number. So make sure you have that handy to include it in. Um, just continue everything, hit next, and then you pretty much select the course that you're wanting to apply for. Um, something also to note, you can only apply for one program in the early offer program. You unfortunately can't apply for multiple. So have a good think about what your dream course is and apply for that particular one. And then you um, select the two categories that you're wanting to apply for. So if you have a look on the screen, I think it's leadership and communication, and then you go to the next page. And then from there, you can put in your 200 word statement and then upload your documents and things like that as well. So it's really, really straightforward system. You tick the privacy agreements, hit submit, and you're pretty much good to go. So it is a really simple process. Um, it works very well on Chrome, a bit of a heads up, but yeah, it should be fine either way. Um, and if you have any questions throughout the actual application stage, um, I'll be able to share some contact details for you at the end of the session. So you can send us some screenshots or just ask us your question and we'll be able to help you as well. Now, in terms of offers, if you are successful in the early offer program, you will be given an offer on the 24th of September. So that's really early. Um, I think that's in the school holidays. Um, so it's you know a nice little treat to come back to for term four when exams start. Um, so yeah, that's the early offer date that you'll find out by. So you'll pretty much receive a letter and it will tell you what your conditions of entry are for the course. It will tell you what ATAR you need to meet and also you still need to meet the prerequisite subjects. So it'll just outline that very clearly for you and then you'll receive information about how to look at your preferencing on VTAC to ensure that you will get the place at the end of the day. Um, and if you are not successful in an early offer application, that definitely doesn't mean you won't get a place into the program. So don't lose hope, don't give up, don't stress. That just means that you have to maybe look at some other pathways. Who knows, you might be able to go straight into the program. You might have done really well. And if you haven't, that's completely fine. It's been a really rough year and we all understand that. You'll be able to look at pathway options. And that's when you can look at your associate degrees, um, your diplomas and certificates, and you can use those to gain entry. And what will do we'll pop the pathways tool um, link in the chat now so you can have a look and find the right pathways for you just to start thinking about that now as well it's probably pretty handy um, and then we have some key, date, key, key dates. So just to recap, applications are open now. Um, the applications close on the 5th of September, so next week. So you pretty much have one week to get everything together. Highly encourage you to not leave it to the last minute. Make sure you start it early. You know, have a read through your 200 word piece. Get mum and dad to read it or a friend or a teacher to read it. Make sure you've got another set of eyes on it. Um, and then if you are successful, you receive your offer on the 24th of September. And then later on in the year, um, you can update your preferences, but you can do that by the 30th of September to avoid fees and things like that. But I'm sure your career advisors will cover this for you in your classroom. So hopefully um, that helped. These dates are also on our website on the early offer page. So don't stress if you forget, you can go back and check out the resources there. So to help you, we have a really great early offer application portal, which has been linked in the chat. We also have a really great application guide PDF. So that's um, a PDF which pretty much tells you step by step what you need to do. It also includes the skills categories matrix, the five tables that I was going through earlier. And there's also a whole range of FAQs. Um, so any question you has most likely has already been answered over there. So make sure you have a look. Um, it really does give you a good understanding of how it works. Um, and if you have any questions from now, feel free to pop it in the chat. But after today's session, you are welcome to email earlyoffer at rmit.edu.au and the team will be able to get back to you and help you out with any questions. So make sure you get onto that, um, you know, get onto the application portal and have a suss of everything and make sure you know you're not leaving that to the last minute so you give yourself the best chance but um, we will move on to questions now so I've actually got two lovely current RMIT students um, who will be able to introduce themselves and talk about their different skills um, that, that they picked up in their extracurricular activities when they're in high school. Now, just a reminder, they didn't apply for the early offer program because unfortunately for them, it didn't exist at the time. But this will hopefully give you an understanding of how you can incorporate different um, things that you've done over the years as a part of your application. So um, what I'll do is we'll start off with Sam. Um, I might get you to introduce yourself, the course that you're studying, um, and just give a bit of an introduction. 
Uh, yeah, so hey everyone, I'm Sam and I'm currently studying my fourth year of electrical and electronics engineering, majoring in network and telecommunications engineering. Fantastic, thank you Sam. And we'll also introduce Ella. So Ella is studying um, applied science majoring in biology. Do you want to introduce yourself, Ella? Yes, thank you so much, Tarika. Hi everyone, my name's Ella. I'm in my first year at RMIT and I'm studying biology. Awesome. So we'll start, say with you, Ella, for the first question. Um, what is an example from high school where you have used the leadership category? So if you're applying for the early offer program, what kind of skills did you develop um, through leadership in high school? Yeah, so um, in high school, especially in my senior years, I was school captain um, as well as part of the Student Leadership Council. And um, I also helped found and I was the president uh, for my local Rotary Interact Club. Um, which is just like a group for young people for volunteering um, and I learned to do a lot of things but I think especially I learned how to work effectively in a team environment and how to delegate tasks to different people as the president I it's very easy to kind of go and do everything yourself but I learned a lot um, on how to uh, work in a group and delegate different tasks so that we could effectively create like a really awesome event or program uh, for everyone. Fantastic. And um, Sam, I might get you to ask answer the same question. What would you what have you done that fits into the leadership category? Yeah, so um, in year 12, I was the house music conductor. Um, this involved leading the house in any music related activities and was especially important for house chorals where each house would as one unit sing a couple of songs. Um, my job involved teaching and conducting a song for the mass singing competition and help out in any way I can for instrumentals and other house competitions. Um, the leadership skills that I'd say I developed in this position would be to be pragmatic. Um, I had to select a song for massing, which was, which fit within the skill ranges of everyone. And not everyone is a skilled singer. And this really showed in the other houses where the consideration wasn't taken. Um, I had to judge our singing level as a cohort and choose a suitable song, then transpose it where necessary to fit the vocal ranges as well. So if I noticed that we were struggling in a certain section, I transposed it or changed the song in a way which made it easier to sing and then teach and conduct the song for the house. Um, I was awarded full colours uh, merit for this position and I can say I can use this skill in a team based environment where I need to analyse the skills of individuals and make the necessary changes to benefit the team as a whole. Fantastic. So for those listening, that really shows different skills like delegating with respect, listening, adaptability, pragmatic. So they're the types of examples that you might want to think about for leadership. But we'll move on to you, Ella. Um, in terms of the communication category, what example would you have given in your application? Yeah, so um, when I was in year 12, I uh, participated in the National Youth Science Forum in Canberra, as well as I got to go to London to go to the International Youth Science Forum. And in my applications, as well as at the program, I had to solve a lot of the world's big problems and present them to a group of people who were judging my application. Um, and I then had to take these presentations once I got accepted and uh, do these presentations in front of like 600 plus people, which was very scary. Um, but I had to learn how to kind of conquer my own fear and challenge myself to talk in front of lots of people, but also learn how to communicate in a way that everyone would understand because I was talking about science and STEM and I had to figure out like what language worked best and how to make the ideas that I was talking about applicable to everyone in the room. Uh, so that was a really big uh, skill that I learned from those two programs. Awesome. Thank you so much for that. Sounds exciting and a really good experience. Um, Sam, we'll move on to you. So in terms of the interpersonal skills and teamwork category, what kind of examples do you have for that? Um, for this, I can say that I was part of the school soccer team and uh, playing centre midfielder as well as the vice captain for our baseball team. Um, as the vice captain, I had the say in the selection of new players as well as the training regime um, play and the player positions. In soccer, um, because I played the centre midfield, my role was geared more towards knowing the play style of everyone around me. Um, I needed to know the strengths and weaknesses of the attacking and defensive side of my team, as well as the other team, because I'm going to be the one who's be, who's running back and forth the most. Um, for both these activities, I developed my adaptability. I had to adapt to the new situations which rose from each new team that we faced and change my play style as well as recognising how my teammates fared 
and adapt to help them to reach the highest uh, team potential. Fantastic. And Ella, with the same skills, so the interpersonal skills and teamwork category, I know you have a few different examples there. Do you want to touch on those for the audience? Yeah, sure. So um, I worked two jobs when I was in high school. Um, I worked at a cinema. I was a cinema attendant and I also did children's birthday parties. So two very different jobs. Um, but I definitely learned a lot about teamwork and leadership and also, you know, things like uh, solving problems on the spot um, and how to communicate effectively with my managers. Um, so I definitely would use that uh, in that topic. But I also um, got an award called the Australian Defence uh, Force Long Tan Leadership Award and Teamwork Award. Um, and this was in response to me doing a lot of volunteer work in my community, but also it kind of led on from being school captain, uh, doing lots of extracurriculars that enabled me to communicate with lots of different people. But it also was recognising that I learned a lot about teamwork and working in groups and being a leader, but also learning when to step back um, and fundraising and so many other things. So the award, as well as like working multiple jobs is a really good uh, example of interpersonal skills and teamwork, especially for that category. Fantastic. Thank you so much. So we'll move over to Sam now. The next category is creative thinking and innovation. So I know uh, we have a singer in amongst most of us. I don't know if you want to sing the answer, but did you want to talk about your examples there? Um, yeah, so as you said, I'm a singer and I can use my uh, extracurricular activity of MHA singers. Um, so we're basically the top eight singers of the school and regularly performed for and outside of school um, at various events. Um, so the time commitment for this was about three to four hours per week and the number, obviously, the number would obviously increase the closer we got to performances. Um, in this category, I'd say the main thing that I learned was attention to detail. Um, we obviously had to perform our songs and this was sometimes the audiences in the thousands and always representing our schools. So we had to present the technical and vocal skills required for us to be on point with every single note and articulation in the song. Um, everything had to be perfect, uh, pitch perfect. And this was done through intense rehearsals and practice. Uh, I can also say my experience with Western Chances Scholarship. Um, I received the scholarship for academic achievement and artistic intelligence. And this required that I perform a song with a little bit of my own twist and uh, tweaking towards it. And obviously I had to create a song and transpose it and change it in a way that was unique and uh, new. And this also required a lot of attention to detail as again, everything has to be perfect and everything had to be um, on point and pitch perfect. Wonderful. And I think a really good point for the audience there is um, in that answer, um, Sam included how long he'd been doing the activity for. So make sure you talk about the duration um, because that does help in terms of getting more merit for um, your particular um, category that you're applying for. If it's something you've only done for a week just for the application, obviously that won't stand as strongly as something you've been doing for a whole year, three to four hours a week as well. So make sure you're considering that when you're picking your categories and you pick the ones where you have the most experience and the best examples. Um, but Ella, again, we'll get you to answer the, the same category again. So creative thinking and innovation. What skills did you develop there? Yeah, so I, um, I touched on it previously, but I I did a lot of work in my community. I worked with Rotary. I worked with um, my local council, local schools, all that kind of stuff. And I had to learn how to get people interested in the stuff that I was trying to pitch to them. So um, I did like women's marches and uh, climate protests and things like that. Uh, so I had to learn how to pitch ideas to a group of people from lots of different backgrounds and walks of life. Um, and there's definitely taught me that a lot and, and teamwork as well and learning how to do that in a group. Um, but a lot of creative creative like problem solving had to go into this as well about like things that could go wrong and how we would deal with them in a way that uh, was professional and you know for a bunch of high schoolers doing stuff. Um, and again just working on my leadership skills and delegation skills and trying to be as innovative as I possibly could with these fundraising and, and stuff like that. Fantastic. And final question for you both. We'll start with Sam. The final category is analytical and critical thinking. So what did you get up into high school that fits under that category? 
Um, analytical and critical thinking. I was part of the Science Olympiad for physics. Um, this obviously, so they'd give us a different physics problem, and we as individuals or a team can work towards solving the problem. Um, the problem that we were faced with: what is the uh, thermal constitution of balls that bounce when they're so when they're hot? Do they bounce more? When they're cold, do they bounce less? Um, and we obviously had to analyze the problem that was given to us and develop an experiment um, to show the results that we got from this uh, particular experiment that we had. And yeah, of course, so analytical and critical thinking wise, it really showed the problem solving uh, capabilities that I had. And I was able to apply these problem solving methods that I developed during that science Olympiad into other aspects of my life as well. So I could definitely use that for um, this offer, yeah. Perfect. And um, Ella, same one, analytical and critical thinking. Take it away. Thank you. Um, just going back to the fact that I was in the National Youth Science Forum and the London International Youth Science Forum, I, um, within that quite like the Science Olympiad, we got given a bunch of problems that we had to solve. So one of them, we had to come up with a creative solution for climate change. So we looked at how seaweed could be used as an alternative to uh, carbon and oil. Um, and we had to present that to a group. Um, I also looked at for my NYSF application, how educating young women and girls could solve a bunch of the world's financial issues as well as things like climate change. Um, so I had to look at creative and like the last topic, but also analytical ways that I could solve the world's biggest issues um, and do that in a team. Um, and we each had to kind of bring something different to the table. Fantastic. Well, thank you, Sam and Ella, for all your insights and all the cool activities and things and sharing your experiences from high school. If you are in the audience, don't get overwhelmed. I know Sam and Ella were very busy bees in high school and they've done a lot, but you don't have to have as many experiences that, as them. You can use, as I said, the same experience in two categories or use on work on different experiences. So don't stress. They had examples. Um, luckily for this presentation for all five, but you only need to meet two of the five categories. But what we'll do now is we'll open up to the audience questions that you've popped in the live chat and I'll get Kate to Q&A them um, and read them out to me. Thank you. Hi, Tarika, it's Teresa here. So we've got a few questions for you in the chat. So thank you all for providing those to us. So one of the questions were around about prerequisite scores. Do they still need to meet prerequisites to be eligible for early offer? Yes, yeah, so for your um, prerequisites, you still need to meet them for the particular program that you're applying for. It's the ATAR scores that um, becomes conditional and it reduces slightly, but the prerequisite stays the same. So if you're applying for a course that requires a 25 in English, you still need to meet the 25 in English. Or if it's asking for a 20 in biology, you still need to make sure you do that. So yeah, definitely make sure you um, work hard to get those scores. Amazing. We've had another question around about interviews. Will people be interviewed for early offer? Yes, so um, yeah, no, there's actually no interviews. So you just have to submit your application um, and if all goes well, you receive the offer at the end of September. So you don't need to stress too much about, you know, preparing for that. So just make sure you put the hard yards in this week with your application and hope for the best from there. Amazing. So we're getting a lot of questions around individual experiences. Do yeah. you just want to give us a couple examples of um, experiences people can use? And what if they don't know which category they fall under? What can they do? Can you give us any tips? Certainly. So different experiences can be things like part time work. It can be sports teams, whether it's inter school sports at school or, um, you know, sports that you play outside of school on the weekends or weeknights and things like that. It can be competitions that you would have taken part in at school as well, or even just assignments or projects that you might have done. Um, and also things that you might have set up. So if you really are into games and you've you know, made a bit of a game or you've made you know, a bit of a side hustle or you help out with the family business, they're the different types of things you can talk about. In terms of working out which category you fit under, just go back um, and have a look at our website and the PDF and you'll be able to see the different kind of skills um, that fall under each category in the matrix. And just have a think about what kind of skills that you developed and which ones 
kind of align with those categories. Now, you might find, and as I was going through the examples earlier and also with Ella and Sam, that some of the categories have the same subcategories, like listen is in communication, but it's also in teamwork. That's completely fine. And you can talk about how you would listen to your manager um, say if you only work part time and that's all you've done you can talk about how you listen to your manager and you know you know listen get their direction and things like that but then also how you listen to your customers um or how you listen to your team so then that can be two different ways you can kind of talk about it if you get stuck and you're really unsure your career advisors are your best bet because we have um briefed them into the early offer program so they'll be able to help you out or maybe get mum and dad to look at it with you but yeah have a look um it won't be it won't always be an easy kind of definite that this is definitely leadership because you're school captain um, and that's fine just think about which one is the most aligned and which one you have the best example for and the most amount of time you've been doing it as well really great tips thanks Tarika so we do have a question around where do they place that program on their preference list yeah, so pretty much we say treat your preference list like a wish list. So the course that you're wanting to get into the most, put that number one. So what we say, put it in the highest eligible spot. Um, and that way, as long as it's, you know, in the highest eligible spot, then you have the best chance of turning that conditional offer into a final offer when offers come out. Amazing. And also we do have one final question, which is, um, do I need my VTAC ID? Can you explain how important that is and um, why we need that? Yes, so you do need to submit your VTAC ID as a part of your application. As a year 12 student, all students must be applying for bachelor programs through VTAC. So you need it regardless of whether you want an early apply for early offer or not. So you definitely need to include it. And the reason why we have it is that it kind of um, links your application when it comes through, through VTAC at the end of the year after you finish your exams with your early offer. And we can make sure it's all correct and all in line there. Wonderful. I might get you to wrap up, but also supply. If anyone has any further questions, where they can turn to. Thanks, Tarika. No worries. So I'll just pop this page up again. If you do have any questions, again, go back and have a look at the FAQs on our early offer webpage. Um, that's where the portal is, where students can apply, as well as our handy application guide PDF. And then if you have any questions, you can always um, email earlyoffer at rmit.edu.au. But I will wrap up now. I hope you guys enjoyed this session, found it useful. Um, applications close next week on the 5th of September, so make sure you submit it on time because unfortunately it won't be getting extended further from that date. Uh, but yeah, hope you enjoyed Open Day. If you wanted to watch anything back this session or any others, you can enjoy Open Day on demand for the month of September. So you can go back and watch a recording or give it to mum and dad because you don't want to explain it again to them. Feel free to pass on all the links there. But yeah, hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend and all the best with your studies.